If you've been watching anime for any amount of time now, you probably recognize one or more of these logos. These are anime studios, and by the end of this video, you at least have a basic understanding of what all the largest, most well known, and most respected studios make, what they are known for, and what they each are best at. So the next time you see a new anime, you can at least look at the studio to get a general idea of what the show is going to be like. Hello guys, my name is Chris from Anniosophy, and welcome to a basic understanding of anime studios. Let's get started. Now to start, let's look at our first studio, which is Studio Wit. Wit Studio was founded in 2012 as a subsidiary of ID Port under George Wada of Production IG. Even though they are a relatively young studio, they came onto the scene with a bang with their first anime and smash hit being Attack on Titan in 2013. From there, they later produced other popular shows like Cabinet of the Iron Fortress, Serpent of the End, and The Ancient Magus Bride. One key feature of Wit animes are these incredibly detailed clothes they do on their characters in very emotional scenes. This technique is called Special Effects for Living Beings and is very prevalent in the majority of their works. Because with Studio is relatively new, there aren't any overall negative aspects of their shows as of yet, so only time can tell if there's really going to be any underlining issues later on. So with that, let's move on to our next studio which is A1 Pictures. A1 Pictures was founded in 2005 by X and Y employee Mikahiri Iwata, with their first anime being Then My Then Mirai in 2006. And then from there they started making many popular shows, starting with their series Black Butler in 2008, and then later releasing their hugely popular series Fairy Tale 2009. And then in 2012 they hit record heights with their anime Sword Art Online becoming one of the most watched anime of all time. Not too many A1 also made other popular anime like Anohana, Blue Exorcist, From a New World, Your Line April, Magi, and Ori Emo, with one of their most recent anime being Air Manga Sensei in Spring 2017. Because of shows like these, A1 has become one of the most popular and well liked studios in the anime industry with them being able to cover many different genres and for the most part do them quite well, with great animation and solid characters. The only downside day one is that since they are such a powerhouse of a studio, cranking out on average 2 or 3 shows a season, not all those shows are going to be AAA shows, with the animation quality varying dramatically between their good shows and their bad shows. Because of this, it's always a mixed bag of the show you're watching for them is going to be good, or does another piece of garbage to be thrown into the pile of garbage cranked out of the anime industry every season. But anyways, from there, let's move on to the next studio, which is the White Fox. White Fox was founded in 2007 by Gekko Iwata, with their first anime being Tears of Tyra in 2009. But what really put them in the spotlight was their anime Steinsgate in 2011. And from there, they made more great series like Drum and Gone, Is the Order Rabbit, Kanagatari, The Devil the Part Timer, Akiyama Kill, and Re Zero. Because of shows like these, even though they are relatively young, it is already clear that White Fox definitely values quality over quantity. And you can already tell this just by seeing the amount of effort they put into each one of their shows. With all those shows looking beautiful, having interesting stories, and impactful music. But anyways, let's move on to the next studio, which is Studio Madhouse. Madhouse was founded in 1972 by ex Mushi Pro animators Massimo Mariyama, Osama Dadaki, Rintro, and Yoshiaki Kariuri, with their first anime being Ace Oniri in 1973. After that, they put out some great shows like Trigun and Monster, but would arguably put them in the spotlight with their 2006 smash hit Death Note. And from there, they made more incredibly popular shows like Helsing Ultimate, Black Lagoon, Claymore, Hunter x Hunter, Death Paradise, High School of the Dead, No Game of Life, Parasite of the Maxim, and One Punch Man, with them also making some popular movies like Summer War, Wolf Children, and The Girl Who Lived Through Time. Because of titles like these, Madhouse is known for their fantastic animation, beautiful music, creating intriguing worlds, and always staying true to the source material. Because of all this, they are juggernauts in the industry, cranking out hit after hit. But the downside to Madhouse is since they do such a good job of making adaptations, people want to see more of their shows. And that is the problem with Madhouse, since Madhouse almost never makes sequels for any of their works, which leads to these huge cliffhangers for a bunch of their shows. Examples of this include shows like High School of the Dead, Overlord, Batum, and No Game No Life. Because of this, Madhouse has a reputation for making shows that are amazing to watch while they last, but ultimately will probably not have a satisfying ending. So from there, let's move on to our next studio, which is Studio Silverlink. Silverlink was founded in 2007 by Hayato Kanego, with their first anime being Tayotama Kiss on My Deity in 2009, with their most popular animes being Watamote, Kuroku Connect, and Baka and Test. Unfortunately for Silverlink though, the most memorable thing about them is that their shows are either just mediocre or completely unwatchable, with examples of this being shows like Chaos Dragon, Inch Viewed, and Girls Friends Beto, with a few exceptions being Nanan Bari, Baka and Teth, Takakun is always listening, Koku Connect, and maybe Duskin Maiden of Amnesia. Other than them, the rest of the shows Silverlink has put out till today are sadly completely trash. So let's move on to Production IG. Production IG was founded in 1987 by Misuo Ichikawa with their first full length anime being Zillan in 1987, but will put them in the spotlight with their Ghost in the Shell movie in 1995, which led to the popular full length anime adaptation named Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex in 2002. From there, they also made other popular shows like Psychopath, Guilty Crown, Kirkwood No Basket, Eden of the Heath, Haikyuu, and Kimi Nitodoki, with them also collaborating on Fooly Cooly and Attack on Titan. 
at the studio, production ID is just above average to be completely honest. They don't do anything necessarily wrong, but they don't have any shows or features that make them stand out and bring them up from just a B-level studio to an A, in my opinion. Other than the fact that they do a pretty good job with their characters in motion. But other than that, there's nothing that really makes them stand out against the others. So let's just move on to the next studio, Studio Dean. Studio Dean was founded in 1975 by animators who left Sunrise with their first anime being Yuri Yoshira in 1981. Now, Studio Dean is interesting to talk about because you really need to split it into two parts, Old Dean before 2000 and New Dean after 2000. With Old Dean actually being a pretty good studio, with their most popular work being Roroni Kenshin. But New Dean is unfortunately kind of a pile of shit, with atrocious animation quality like in When They Cry, completely butchered adaptations like in Face Stay Night 2006, incoherent direction and pacing like in Lock Cry in Season 2, or just plainly awful show that shouldn't exist like in Pupa. The only exception to the pile of garbage they put out are Hellgirl, Nura, and their comedies, which are actually pretty good. And this is where New Dean really shines, with shows like Is This a Zombie, Sakurari, Konosuba, and How Many You Heard, I'm Sakamoto, which are all great comedies in their own right. So from there, let's move on to Kyoto Animation. Kyoto Animation was formed in 1981 by a married couple named Yoko Hana and Hideaki Hana. Kyo Ani at the beginning worked closely with Kodokawa to mainly produce light novel adaptations. After their first OVA called Muntu, Kyo Ani inherited the rights to the popular IP Full Metal Panic from Studio Gondo, which led them to make their first full length anime named Full Metal Panic from Mofu, and later making the sequel Full Metal Panic The Second Reign. From there, Kyo Ani made many more popular titles like Lucky Star, Clan Ad, Kaon, and The Melancholy of Harbin Suzumiya, with some of their most recent works being shows like Nichijo, Free, Hiyoka, Beyond the Boundary, Sound Euphonium, and Myth Kobayashi Dragon Maid. Now, as a studio, KyoAni is driven from the vast majority of studios in the anime industry because they do all their work in health, which leads to consistently top quality animation with their unique style prevalent in almost all their work. One of the most distinctive traits KyoAni anime have is the amount of effort they put into crafting every part of their characters, from the facial expressions to their body language, to carefully display every emotion happening on screen to connect you with the character as much as possible during any given scene. This is why Kyoen has become one of the most beloved and respected studios in the anime industry. Now, from there, let's move on to Brainspace. Brainspace was founded in 1996 by former TMS Entertainment staff, with their first anime being Dungunder in 2002. From there, they made a couple popular anime like Dorara, Mighty Norman Safu, Bakano, My Little Monster, Nothing Me's Book of Friends, and Spice and Wolf Season 2. But even though Brainspace has been around for a little over 20 years, they haven't made any anime that really stand out other than the handful of popular shows I just mentioned, but even those aren't even that popular. Brainspace seems to just either focus on making subpar mediocre anime like Amnesia, End Rider, or Brothers Conflict, or they just not making second scenes for the popular show, the only exception being Nothing Me's Book of Friends. And this trend continues to this day with their most recent non-mediocre thing being Kiss Me Not Him, but even that wasn't fantastic or groundbreaking in any way. So in the end, if you watch a brand space show that you actually like, don't get your hope for a second season because it probably won't happen. Anyways, from there, let's move on to the next studio, which is Sunrise. Sunrise is one of the largest and most famous Japanese animation studios in the world. Sunrise was founded in 1972 by former members of Mushi Productions to specialize in robotic animation starting with the anime Mobile Suit Gundam in 1979. And they continue this specialization to this day with their expansive Mobile Suit Gundam universe, making them arguably the kings of the mecha genre. They also worked on other hugely popular anime like Code Geass, Cowboy Bebop, and Gintama. Not to mention other popular shows like Excel World, Good Luck Girl, and Daily Lives of High School Boys. Making them legends in the anime industry for being around for so long and for having such a huge catalog of shows. With the only downside to their studio being that because they have such a huge list of shows, sometimes some of them fall through the cracks. Examples of this being shows like Sacred 7, Horizon in the Middle of Nowhere, and Black God. Meaning overall the shows that Sunrise actually put the effort into sometimes become great. And from there let's move on to our next studio which is Studio Lurk. Lurk was founded in 2011 as a part of Studio Hibari, with their first anime as Studio Lurk being Magikoi O Samurai Girls in 2011. Now Lurk is in a very well known studio compared to the others in this video, with their most popular works being Duncan Rampa, Assassinated in the Classroom, Unbreakable Mecha Doll, Monster Me, Yumi, School Lives, and Scum the Witch. But even though they are a smaller studio and only have a handful of shows, what they have put out so far showed real potential. With Assassinating Classroom telling the captivating story about the hardship the Classroom has to face together, Scum with telling a brutally realistic story of how relationships and love work in the real world, Monster Me doing being a software edgy comedy that is actually funny, and School Eyes doing a unique twist on the movie genre making it vastly more interesting than its competitors. So because of shows like these, hopefully Studio Lurk is only going up from here. Now let's move on to the next studio which is Studio Ghibli. Studio Ghibli was founded in 1985 by Hayao Miyazaki, Toshio Suzuki, and Aishawa Takahata after the success of Miyazaki's 1984 film Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. 
Because of this, from the very beginning of the studio's creation, they have been legends in the anime industry for their beautiful and innovative storytelling that they have in each of their films. With Miyazaki in particular being compared favorably to the likes of Walt Disney for the creativity and vision he had in all of his films. Examples of this are too many to count right now, but include works like Spirited Away, Princess Mononoke, How's Moving Castle, Grave of the Fireflies, My Neighbor Totoro, and Kiki's Delivery Service, just to name a few. But what really makes this studio shine is not the enjoyment you get from watching one of the movies, but it's about the journey everyone takes while watching a Ghibli film. For example, Kiki Delivery Service hits close to home for many people because it's a coming based story about trying to discover what you want to spend your life doing and finding the motivation to do so, which is a problem many people face at least at some point in their lives. This is where Ghibli truly shines because many of their movies have a theme that we can all relate to in one way or another. But anyways, let's move on to the next studio, which is Studio Mappa. Mappa was founded in 2011 by Masao Mariyama, who was the co-founder of Madhouse, but left Madhouse to form Mappa. One of their best and first animes was Kill on the Slope in 2012, but what arguably put them in the spotlight was their 2014 smash hit, Vankia no Terror. From there, they also made Yoshiro and Tora, Raid the Bahaman, and Yuri on Ice. As they are a fairly new studio, they are not very well known, and they don't really have something you would consider a AAA show as of yet. Except for maybe Vankia no Terror. But so far, everything they have put out has been of general high quality, and they are led by the ex studio head of Mana, so to me, it is clear they have a bright future ahead of them. So, let's move on to the next studio, Toei Animation. Toei Animation was founded in 1948, as they are one of the oldest animation studios in Japan, with them making the first colored anime feature film in 1958, called The Tales of the White Serpent. Since Toei has been around for so long, let's just move ahead to the 80s and 90s when Toei started to become famous worldwide with their extremely popular shows like Dragon Ball Z, Sailor Moon, Digimon, Yu Gi Oh!, and One Piece. Because of shows like these, Toei has become a household name, where even if you don't remember the name itself, you definitely know their logo. Unfortunately for Toei though, that isn't completely a good thing, since they are known for their downright lazy animation and horrible pacing of their shows overall. Now, yes, it is kind of to be expected, since they mostly focus on long running shows, but that's not an excuse for some of the completely unwatchable garbage they have put out with Dragon Ball Super, and stuff like the last 300 episodes of One Piece. So, let's just drop it and move on to the next studio, which is Studio Piero. Studio Pierre was founded in 1979 by former employees of Tashinoko Productions and Mushi Productions, with their first anime being The Wonderful Adventures of Niles in 1980. From there, what put them on the map were their long running shonen like Yu Yu Hakusho, Naruto, and Bleach, with them later putting out other popular shows like Great Teacher Onizuwa, Tokyo Ghoul, and Yana of the Dawn. One key feature of their anime are the fantastic fight scenes in most of their shonen. But the negative side to this studio is, well, the insane amount of filler which many of their long running shonen have, with Bleach and Naruto for example having more than 100 episodes of filler each on their own, which leads into the core problem with anime from Studio Piero, which is the horrible pacing most of their anime have. Which is disappointing since animation wise they are much more consistent than other studios like Toei Animation. But from there let's move on to the next studio which is JC Staff. JC Staff or Japanese Creative Staff was founded in 1986 by Tokuyubi Miyata with their first full length anime being Metal Fighter Miku in 1994 but what arguably put them on the map were their 2008 hit Toradora. From there, other popular anime they made were Bakuman, Sakura Anoshana, Maid Sama, and the Index series, with some of the more recent works being Food Wars, Either Ron to pick up girls in a dungeon, and the pet girl Sakurasu. Now when it comes to this studio as a whole, it is unfortunately just average in basically all aspects, including animation, character, story, and music, except for maybe in Toradora and the pet girl Sakurasu. And, in all honesty, what most people consider good about the studio is all thanks to one man named Gohei Kawase, a producer at JC staff who with his path tied brings in about one third to one half of all the business for the studio. Anyways, from there, let's move on to Studio Trigger. Trigger was founded in 2011 by former Gainax employee Hiroyushi Mashi and Masahiko Osuga after they worked on Tekken Tap and Gurren Lagann together. At the beginning, money was very tight, so they tried many creative ways to promote their animes like putting their first anime Inferno Cop on YouTube for free and having a Kickstarter for the Little Academia movie. But the show that put Trigger on the map was Killer Kill in 2013, and from there on they put out other interesting shows like When Supernatural Battles Become Commonplace, Kid Niver, and a full length 24 hour episode run of Little Witch Academia. Trigger is known for their experimental and over the top style, with them always being open to try new things. This is shown in the variety of animation styles they show in their animes, like from Space Patrol Ludico to Kid Niver to whatever Ninja Slayer was supposed to be. So from there, let's move on to the next studio, which is PA Works. PA Works or Progressive Animation Works was founded in 2000 by Kenji Hurakawa, with their first anime coming out in 2008 named True Tears, but what really put them on the map were their 2010 smash hit Angel Beats. From there they made more great series like Another, Shirobako, and Nagi no Asakura. One of the most impactful features of PA Works is how beautiful everything in their anime looks, with special care being put into each of their incredible backgrounds. Letting you know above all else, the show will be beautiful to watch. 
Unfortunately though, where the studio has problems sometimes is in their story, with the characters making irrational decisions seemingly out of nowhere for no reason whatsoever. Example of this would be shows like Charlotte, Gaslip, and Red Data Girl, making this studio honestly just another mixed bag when it comes to what you're going to watch. Next from there, we have Studio Bones. Bones was founded in 1998 by Masahiro Minami, Hiroshi Osaka, and Tachihiko Kawamoto, after the three of them worked on Kawabi all together at Sunrise. Their first enemies were collaborations with Sunrise, making movies based on two of their most famous works, Escaplone, A Girl in Gaia, and Kawabi Bob Knocking on Heaven's Door. But soon enough, Bone was destined for greatness, becoming one of the most respected anime studios in Japan, making many extremely popular shows like Fullmetal Alchemist Brotherhood, Eureka 7, Darker Than Black, Soul Leader, Noragami, and Oran High School Health Club. Not to mention more recent works like Bungo and Stray Dogs, Mob Psycho 100, and My Hero Academy. Because of shows like these, Bones has become one of the most beloved anime studios in the industry. At Bones, their philosophy is work on what you want, and because of this, their animators only work on products they themselves are passionate about, which is why some of the most interesting and gorgeous anime in the past 20 years have come out of Bones. From there, let's talk about our next studio, which is Studio Ufotable. Ufotable was founded in 2000 by former TMS Entertainment staff, with their first anime being Night Hunter Eternity in 2002. But the anime that put them in the spotlight was their hugely popular show, Faint Zero. Then from there, they also really showed like Faint Stay Night on the Mid of Blayworks, The Guardian of Sinners, God Eater, and The Tales of the Styria. Studio Ufotable is known for animation so beautiful it looks like each of their shows has the budget of a small country, resulting in movie quality animation. They also work very closely with the publisher Tide Moon, who are the ones behind the source material for The Guardian of Sinners and the Fate franchise, which is why those series are Ufotable's best ones. But where you photo relax is their non time Moon anime, which shows like God Eater and Tales of Zestaria, because those are so boring they're worth as much as moving backgrounds because you don't actually care what's going on, you just like that it looks fucking pretty. In the end, the best thing Ufotable can do is work with Tide Moon because those shows have beautiful and fantastically epic stories that make you care about every character in them, while every other anime from them are incoherent confusing methods that don't understand what a story is supposed to be. But anyway, let's move on to our final studio which is Studio Shaft. Shaft was founded in 1975 by Hiroshi Wakawa with their first anime coming out in 1995 called Juni Senchun Bakurensu Eto Ranger. But what really put them on the map was Bakumonogatari in 2009, starting their hugely popular franchise called the Monogatari series. From there, they made more popular series like Madoka Magica and Nisekoi, with two of the most prominent features of this studio being the incredible color palette and the amazing storytelling they have throughout their shows like Madoka Magica and the Monogatari series. Unfortunately, this is where the problem arises for some people who watch their shows, because what is intricately laced beautiful storytelling to some is just convoluted bullshit to others. So it really depends on your taste if you will like their shows or not. But before we move on, we first have to mention Shaft's key feature, which are these absurd head tilts in the majority of their animes, as if this is something regular people do in their everyday lives. But anyways guys, that'll do it for this video. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like if you liked it and share with your friends as well. Also, comment below and tell me your thoughts on these studios and your thoughts on the video in general. Remember guys, new videos every other Sunday, and hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video. Um, that'll be it. Remember guys, my name is Chris from Anyosophy, and uh, yeah, bye, and peace!